but still seem to be like here very wet. So how do we estimate this? What, what is the effect of a ditch like this? How does it, how can we sort of figure this out for the whole country? Well, you could sort of take, okay, we know the, ent we know the entire length of ditches. That's about th over 31,000 kilometers of ditches. A uh, man from the Farmers Association, Ottar Geirsson, he stated that you need 20 kilometers, well, it's basically said that a, a ditch would drain 50 meters, which if you calculate that for one square kilometers, you would need 20 kilometers of ditches to drain one square kilometer. Okay, so we could do that. But that's a little flawed because that's for if you're creating a hay field, which you can destroy enough to take a tractor onto. That's you're affecting wetlands and changing a wetland much you know, earlier than that. You don't have to lower the water table that much to do that. So what I did in 1998, I went to this one valley where, I, where, where all the wetlands were very visible on aerial photographs. I, could, I visited all of them. I saw what had been drained, and I mapped all the drained areas. And then I calculated the length of ditches that were needed to drain this. Actually, I mean, ground truthing, you know, these ha very drained wetlands, I verified that, and then I calculated just the length of ditches needed. And I found out that you only needed 7.3 kilometers of ditches. And so I would get an estimator over 4,000 square kilometer really drained, not only disturbed, but drained. So a big difference there in these two estimates. Uh, about, two, what, 2,750, something like that, or 2,800 square kilometers. So what, what is correct? Of course, mine is estimated also a little flawed because there are areas in the hay fields where the ditches are much closer, so you have denser, so they're overlapping. See, it's, it's a little tricky. So what we have been doing, we have mapped all the ditches in Iceland. And it's really funny to look at it. It's a blue color. It really defines all the lowlands in Iceland, they almost. Not, not, the, not like volcanic areas like the Reykjanes Peninsula, these really dry areas or up there where, it's, where there's no surface water because it all percolates through. So the ditches really define the lowlands. So we see that this has been done basically in all the lowlands in Iceland. This, this, this is mostly sands sandy areas. So we map these, okay, we know where they are and we know their total length. We've also mapped all the hay fields, all the areas that have been cultivated. And some of these are of course not in wetland areas, but we found out that <clears throat> about 550 square kilometers of these hay fields, total of 1700 kilometers, 550 of them were on drained wetlands. Okay. Because that's easy to tell because uh, where there are cultivated fields, that's fully dry. So we can say, okay, that's, we know that's been drained. So that's one thing we could do. But again, how do we figure out for these areas? Not the active fields, but these other areas. If you look at that a little bit closer, here's the hay fields with 50 meters apart. Yes, fully drained. But we see that it's wet here. And the distance is highly variable. I don't know if you see these numbers. From this ditch to this point, it's 140 meters. Here it's 220 meters, 90 meters, 300 meters, 260 meters. And every place where there's a wedge, you see it's all dry here. And this. So how do we do this? Well, again, time is still OK. We have this database, farmland database, which has, um, covers all of Iceland and has sort of, uh, it's a mapping all farmsteads and has divides all land into grasslands heathland, the yellow color, 
cultivated land, poorly vegetated heathlands, shrubs and forests, moss heath or moss land, and then semi-wet and wetlands, and then these partly vegetated or, or, or hardly vegetated areas, these light areas, which are often rocky outcrops or something like that, or gravel fields. Okay, so we have that. Okay, so we said, and we also have this study which showed that the extent of ditches can be up to 200 meters. The influence is commonly, yeah, up to 200 meters. So what we did, we put this buffer, we have all the ditches digitized, and we put this buffer on them, 200 meters. That's the area affected by the ditches. Okay, now, but that's, of course, we can't just do that. And, okay, you see the total area drained in here. You see this will change. Close to 6,000 square meters. Okay, now, but we can't just do that. So we have to, we have to subtract, subtract the lakes and rivers. After we've done that, it's down to 5,700. We also have to subtract partly vegetated and sparsely vegetated land because that's, these are definitely not wetlands or never have been. So you see, because when we put a 200 meter buffer, it will sometimes extend beyond the wetland because sometimes a ditch can be by the border of a wetland and it can extend into the upland dryer like, like these gravel areas or rocky outcrops. So we have to ex uh, extract that from the area. And then it's down to 5,552. And then we take, take out all shrub and natural forest excluded, 5,400. We exclude the land with more than four, uh, 10 degrees slope because these wetlands do not really go into really slow, uh, steep places, of course. Now we're down to basically 5,000. And then, <coughs> of course, we, no, you see all areas extending into the ocean, of course, we have to extract beyond coastline and we're down to 4,600. 27, and then we take out all hay fields because some of the hay fields are also dry land hay fields, all cultivated areas, excluded. Because remember, we can then add the cultivated land that is on peatland because we know that 550 square kilometers. So we're left with about 3,379 square kilometers. And this is a um, estimate of all of Iceland. Of course, it looks like everything is drained because the buffer just kind of fuses together, but uh, so what the overall estimate is that drained and never cultivated is <coughs> a little bit different from there. I think these are the newest numbers. 3,424 square kilometers for forestry, 25 square kilometers, and then the 551 square kilometers of of hay fields or cultivated areas. I didn't put the total down there at the bottom. <laughs> you, you add these, you see what number you get? Exactly 4,000. I thought that was very funny. But anyway, so about 4,000 square kilometers have been drained. Yes? Do all these maps include ditches that were dug for roads? Or yes, areas? that's a very good point. It includes all ditches. And so it's more than the ditches that I was able to extract out of the farmers, uh, the, the logs documenting the farmers. But uh, I don't know if I were to guess, I would say that the, the, the farm associated or agriculture associated ditches were certainly over 90% of all the ditches. But yes, you're entirely right. There are, of course, for roads, for, for areas where there's summer houses and so on, and, and some urban areas and, and so on. Yes, Maria. Uh, could you state almost that the natural status of lowlands in Iceland would be wetlands? Mm. In so, certain areas. Not, not, you cannot say that uh, in all places, no. But not the natural status, no. But in, in West Iceland, for example, Mirar and so on, that's the natural. Yeah, looking at the ditches because they are everywhere. Where, where there's lowland, yeah. But it's a little bit, you know, you have to put a line in there so that it's visible. And when you, have, you show a map of all of Iceland, it sort of all fuses together. So it looks like it's just covering everything. 
So 